Hi again everyone, it's the Stepping Stone 2 podcast, which we on the blog and the uh, Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So check it out please. Uh, Emma's going to get the addresses so she can check it out later on as well. And I want to welcome Emma, um, <coughs> who's supporting Gary today, uh, which is part of what we're going to talk about, the relationship between people. Yeah. Um, and the first instance that Emma came in with, with Gary, the first thing that was quite obvious was that Emma was, was relaxed and comfortable. She was tired, obviously, and a bit kind of stressed. But, but Gary was at ease. Yeah. And that, that's crucial when you're working with someone in social care. If you can get that part right, the rest is going to be fairly straightforward for you. So I want to thank Emma for that because it helps the day go along as well. You know, it's easy for us if there's, there's a good uh, mechanic going on between you both. Uh, we're going to talk about relationships, yeah, on this very wet day in in August what happened to summer uh, it's the 22nd of August that's almost the end of August then we're into September then we're into flipping autumn and, and then it's Christmas and then it's Christmas then Gary's still got his tree up it's not appropriate Gary anyway just to move on from the Christmas tree gate uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at what's important uh, within your services <coughs> about how people get on what's crucial in that mm. yeah and I mentioned about uh, Emma being very open and relaxed with Gary yeah they're one of the things you can can, can mention um, and for me it's about acceptance that we're all different and you know you're not going to get on with everybody but you can have a go <laughs> yeah and then there comes a point where maybe that's not working and you've got to accept that and, and we mentioned this on one of the earlier podcasts about placing people with clients that they didn't get on with. And I'll always say that anybody who says, well, they'll have to work with everybody, is not the way it's done, because I wouldn't expect that myself. <coughs> yeah? You match people up as best you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And OK, you're going to get a time when someone's going to be off for, say, a week or two weeks, and you're going to fill in. But if you know there's been a problem with that member of staff and that client previously, you don't put them in there. Yeah, but if you do put them in, you manage it. Because imagine you're sitting there in your own place at home, and someone sent to you, they knock on the door, and you know this person's not very nice, you've got to be stuck with them all day. How's that going to feel? You know, you don't want to do that. And then because you're being conditioned, you're going to say, well, I don't really like them, I don't want to work with them. Well, you'll have to work with them. <coughs> Sorry, would we accept that? No. No. So, you know, just because you want to get names on your rotor, if it doesn't fit, then it's wrong. Yeah? Now, in that instance with Gary and Emma, it works. So if I was doing a rotor for, for the coming months and I knew you were going to be on shift, I would look for your name, because I know that Gary would be comfortable with that. Yeah? Oh, yeah and yeah. Gary knows the people he's comfortable with, and he expresses that. And that's something else you should be able to do. Yeah? Yeah. Say, well, actually, I'm not happy about that. I'd mm. rather... Oh, we kind of favourites. Another one that's been said before, you know. Yeah. It's not about favourites, it's about getting on with people. Getting on with people. That's all it is, you know. It's not specialist treatment. I, I wouldn't want to spend a day uh, with, with someone I don't like, would you? No. I mean, I'll spend no. a day with her when I don't like her. <laughs> 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 I like her. Thanks, Mark. I like her. Also, also, <laughs> also, while we're, we're on the subject of uh, relationships, uh, Mark at the moment uh, isn't feeling so good. He's come back from his uh, adventures in Calvert Land and he's a bit anxious. Uh, so it might come across that way on the, the podcast. So I apologise on Mark's behalf. I will try and bring him in because it will be good for him to get that focus. But please be aware that Mark's not himself today. No, not. Okay. Um, so, right. I'm going to begin. The begin. Remember that song? Begin. <laughs> I do. Oh, yeah. <coughs> How's it going, Anthony? Uh, I, I can't remember the words. Oh, begin, begin. Oh, you right, make sure. it. No, not make it. Well. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, some Spanish person who. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ah, father. that's right. Ah, yeah. His father. There was Julio Iglesias. Yeah, that, and, that's oh, his father. Yeah. And, uh, Enrique. 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 Yeah. Who didn't sing Begin the Begin. No. Just that right, I mentioned that while we're on. So, right, where were we? We're going to begin. 
Sorry about the background noise, folks. That's some Egypt with a car. With <laughs> silly, silly alarms that, that people get, and then the, you see them running for the car. Oh God, the alarms are again. Just get rid of it. Um, so, getting back to the subject, which was relationships, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It I'm was, going to yeah. start with Trey on my my right, uh, and I'm going to ask you what what the ingredients are you think anywhere for a successful and comfortable relationship. Yeah, when you're working within a service, how do you think it should be? Because all those ingredients should be the same as they are out of the service. That's something people tend to forget. You know, it's different, Gary. In this, oh, it's different. Yeah. It isn't. It's the same. Yeah, and people need to chillax when they're working with people and just just get to know them. Yeah, and whenever I hear people saying, "Oh, well, you can't be friends. It's got to be a working relationship." <coughs> Sorry. If I'm with someone for months and months and months and I'm out with them in, you know, cafes and whatever, we've got to have some friendship for crying out loud, haven't we? Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. So I don't buy that crap. Okay, if you feel that you're friends with someone in your service, that's your friend. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Trey, what are your thoughts on essential ingredients for good relationships? Uh, for me, um, it's uh, mutual respect. Um, you show each other respect, understanding. I think we understand how each other feels. We take that into account. So, uh, like today, Mark is not having a good day, so we take that into account. Uh, you know, yeah. if I was working with you, Mark, I would be thinking about that. Yeah. Um, laughter. I think laughter is really important. Um, and I do uh, enjoy teasing everybody. It's uh, the highlight of my day. <laughs> 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 but uh, it, it's. It's a it's a good way to not have things so serious all the time because we can't be serious all the time, can we? You know. Oh God, why not? Well, it's just not on. <laughs> Life is difficult enough as it is without it being too serious. So, uh, and actually, the humour has to be mutually understood and respected. So that I know if I'm with, and I've been with Gary before, I remember the plasters, that was hilarious. Oh, yeah. We went into uh, a, a chemist in town and Gary wanted some plasters and got some colourful plasters and several boxes. And I say, Gary, why do you need so many? And what did you say, Gary? Keep you warm. Keep you warm. <laughs> so I was in hysterics, standing in the queue while he was buying that. We were both laughing our heads off, it was so funny. But that's the kind of humour I like. It, it's good to have that um, mutual humour with people because life can be difficult. You all know that. You're living very difficult lives. And, 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 uh, and the commercials. And the commercials. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the commercial gate as well. That's really funny. And, uh, commercial and commercials edited. Yes. The, Gary records Have things. It. Um, you can so, tell uh, Emma the story later yeah. on. Yeah. Well, well, Gary likes to record things and he records the same thing and I reckon it's all because he loves the commercials. Uh, <laughs> Not that I do with the programme. Uh, cut, cut, cut some out. He cuts them out. It makes sense, doesn't it, really? Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. don't worry all that flipping stuff about cars and whatever else. So, yeah, it, that's one of the things, you know, respect, compassion, care, um, and it makes a good uh, working therapeutic relationship and friendship because you are part of each other's lives for many hours in a day, for many weeks, months and so forth. So if I ask you the question then Trey, what's the responsibility on the staff then to, I mean Gary quite clearly has lost a lot of that uh, lovely um, Gary-ness over the past years part of which is to do with people leaving, you know, people moving on that actually probably would have been other seat Mark you know, would have stayed, uh, people that, that he had a laugh with, he, you know, he joked with them, whatever. So Gary's kind of losing that quite a bit. He comes back when he gets himself here, but he's still, there's a lot of dullness now in Gary, and that's a lot to do with the environment. So the question was, what's the responsibility on the staff to nurture that kind of way with Gary? I think it's uh, very important. Um, Gary, um, you know, everybody is the same. You have difficulties in your life and you need people in your life oh, that yeah, will yeah. uplift you and make, help make your life better. Oh, yeah. uh, if you don't have that, that's going to make things much harder for you. Oh, and then yeah. you have to struggle even more with what you're dealing with. Oh, yeah. And you're doing that on your own. Oh, yeah. 
uh, and, and that, so it is really important for the staff that work with you to help you on a daily basis with your emotional well-being and the relationship you have with them, oh, what, yeah. how that helps. Oh, yeah. I think it's one of the most important things. Absolutely, it's crucial in, uh, in social care and it's, it's devoid quite extensive within your service at the moment, Guy, and it's got to get back there at some point. I hope to get more people like, like Emma, uh, and that, that hopefully will take place, but that's, you know, that's political, we won't get into that. But yeah, it's crucial, I agree, Trey. Nigel? <coughs> Nigel, what's the important ingredients for successful relationships, do you think, within services? Getting along with each other, and communicating with each other to if there's something wrong with them mm -hmm. or the other anxious or stuff like Mark is. Yeah, yeah. You'll be alright, Mark. We'll, we'll get you sorted, lad. Mm. He's all for taking his shirt off at the minute. Yeah, do you? <laughs> Sorry. He's looking very hooly on. I can't think of anything else. No, you don't. It's not a, not a, you know, it's not a quiz. No. Um, so, if those things weren't uh, in a relationship, Nigel, say that you had staff that were looking after you and it, it wasn't working. What would you do? What do you think should be done? Do it with a client. Or Just don't have that that person with you if you don't get along with them. So if if I say to you then that, that uh, managers say, well, actually you'll have to because we haven't got anybody else. Um, there's nobody else to work with you. Uh, what would you say to that? Well, I don't want to, you, you don't work with. I don't want to work with them. Should no. you have to? No. Right? Should you be forced to work with someone you, you don't get on with, and it's going to make your day difficult? You shouldn't be working with that person, no. Now, is there anything in place to resolve that within services? Oh, yeah, you get yeah. you get someone that you don't get on with, you know, and then they're on shift and you have to go with it <coughs> and then you say, well, I don't want to, to go and then you kick off. You may be like with Gary because you've done it before, uh, where he's kind of used Anglo-Saxon towards people, you know, to get out of the flat or whatever. Now, what tends to happen or happened is that Gary becomes the perpetrator. He's the one that's, that's wrong. Now... If you know your service and you know your clients, there's a thing called challenge and behaviour. Uh, you've probably been on those courses, have you, mm -hmm. Emma? Yeah. Uh, in the real world, proper challenge and behaviour, there's always a causation factor. There's always some reason why your client has reached that particular point. Yeah. Now, what should have happened was the work should have been done well before that occurred because it's damaging to the individual to get angry, and Gary knows that. Uh, so what you should be doing is making sure people get along, making sure people get on, and then you'll probably avoid those outbursts. Because most outbursts are, oh, fuck off, you know? It's not about you. No, it's about them. Something's happened yeah. down the line. And it might be, and Gary again knows this, you know this person's going to be coming on shift again. You know you're going to spend a whole day with them. And you know if you kick off, right, because you don't want it, even though it's your choice, you're going to be basically told off and, and punished, yeah? Um, sorry folks, there's a bit of background noise there. And so you've got, you got, you got to get on with that person, uh, get, get on with people. And you, if, you, if you don't, if you know that person's going to be on, shift with you, uh, you, you, and you're not happy about it, well, and you don't want to be the perpetrator, do you? you don't want to be, yeah, but yeah, most, most people don't become the perpetrator because they're actually frightened of something coming back to them and being told off. And that's most people are conditioned by a, a system. Yeah. You know, uh, well, we've got anybody else, you'll have to work with them and they just walk off and leave them, you know, and you're stuck the rest of the day with somebody you don't like. So that's something that, that needs to change within services. And, and, and I don't buy this, this rubbish about, oh, well, we can't get anybody. Well, sort yourself out then because you're not running the service properly. You know, you've got loads of people on the door that want to work. You know, get them in and induct them and see what they're like. And, you know, you might have a lot of Emmas, people who are going to work well with people. You know, mm -hmm. get them in there, then you won't be short-staffed, you know. Lucy, what do you think is important about people getting on together?
What's important? What, what do you like when you meet people? What, what do you think people should do to get on together? How should they be? So get on together, but we don't. People sometimes don't get on together, do they? No. So what do you do when you don't get on with people, Lucy? What do you do if you don't get on with someone? I don't know. Do you avoid them? Do you try to keep out of the way? Yeah. Yeah, and that happens a lot in services. <clears throat> people will often lock themselves in the room or they'll lock themselves in the toilet or... You know, these are learned behaviours just to avoid... Oh, give it, give it a client. Yeah, it's, it's to yeah. avoid facing that yeah. yeah thanks Lucy Jennifer <coughs> what do you think is, is, is important for successful relationships within services and you've experienced quite a bit of this yourself Emma's getting under status or is she thinks it's going around <laughs> she, she, she thinks it's going around her way next <laughs> and she's doing all these things in her now what should I say well, well, I won't say anything no no what should I say um, it's her next and quite often I know this because I used to take groups quite a lot you, you get like a ring of people yes. and then you know you're at the end and you've got all that bloody stuff to listen to No, it's coming to you so you actually don't listen to half the stuff that's going on no you don't well, what should I say what should I say oh, it's me next I'll just keep it short it'll be fine mm -hmm. you can see it <laughs> Jennifer sorry I cut you off there so what do you think is uh, important in, in relationships, the ingredients that make successful relationships? How do you like to be looked after? Properly. And what, what do you call properly, Jen? Like should, get, getting on. So how should people be with you then when they, when they come on shift with you? They should be nice to us. Mm -hmm. But they're not. Think about people that have been nice to you, people that have, you know, you've got on well with together. How's that gone? That's all right. Is it about them respecting you as a person? Well, some people do, some people don't. Hmm. They think I'm pretty, like, they think I'm childish and I'm not. And I've told them to get out of my house and don't come back. These are people that you, you haven't got on with and these are people that, that you don't want to work with. So when that's happened, have they changed the staff or do you get the same one and then you just, what do you do if the, if the same one comes back on again? I don't, I don't, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't answer it. I just ignore it. Yeah, now, now that, that kind of situation for me, as I mentioned earlier about challenging behaviour and I mentioned to Emma there before, uh, when you go on the, on the courses, uh, you've got to get your housework right before that point because that's the culmination of stuff that's gone wrong prior. Now, yours is which crisis point because if you're, you know, calling people ugly and you tell them to get out of your flat and all the rest of it, then we're not promoting that because I don't agree with that. However bad someone is, you know, you don't promote people being nasty to that support worker because yeah. it might be. They haven't been inducted properly, maybe they're not experienced enough and they don't know how to handle that person, you know, there's a lot of things. And that will be dealt with by regular meetings with your manager, a proper manager, who would talk it through with you and discuss how you feel about working with that client. You know, and it might be you need a little bit of extra training just to, you know, know how to handle that particular condition. But when it gets to that point, when Jennifer's saying about, we know because we know the history of Jen, yeah. you know, that's when it's gone wrong. You've got your service wrong. Get back to the drawing board because she's suffered because of it. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. Gary. Emma's going. Oh. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Gary, we're not laughing at you. So just tell me the situation, but don't mention names. Uh, she, she said you look like a homeless person with long hair and a beard. That's, that's, mm, that's useful for someone who's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is an example, basically, of how you get it wrong and you end up with problems further down the line. Now, yeah. you don't say that to a client, it's abuse. You might have your thoughts, you know, of what you think, but you don't express that to someone who's already living a difficult life anywhere right. and emotionally distressed. You know, I mean, what, what is it about emotionally distressed you don't get? You know your client's not right. Why would you go and say stuff like that? <coughs> it's not right, is it? Oh, no, 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 no. You know, and, and you have a right to uh, to challenge that and take it further. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Um, so anyway, w w so what do you, how do you think it should be, Gary? 
I'll just have to be working at the moment, not, 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 not the, uh, not the nasty, nasty way. Yeah, I think in this instance, although we've kind of gone a tandem, yeah. and it's, it's crucial for Gary, uh, I think this I, is... And see my mum. Yeah, I think this is yeah. an example of how you, how you don't manage a client. It's an extreme example. Yeah. It's not an anomaly. It's something that happens quite a lot. Now, the reason why Gary's been quite vociferous and quite vocal about that is because Gary's not happy. Now, when a client's not happy in your service, you should hang your head in shame because you've done something massively wrong. You haven't done it right, yeah? Now, I know that, that uh, you'll, you'll build and you've built that with Emma now, a relationship. Emma won't be able to fight your battles for you. Aye. And that's yeah. something that'll frustrate the hell out of you because there's no way to take it to. <laughs> now, that's what SS2 is about, yeah. yeah? And I've said before that when I'm off the books, Aye, yeah. we will pursue that. Aye. Uh, but these examples, and not anomalies. No. <coughs> There's a lot of people out there that are suffering that can't actually get to these forums and actually express how they feel. And we should have more of that. And uh, Tony and Ronnie. Yeah, you've lost good members of staff. Oh, and yeah, you're going to yeah. lose more in the future. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah, happen. Yeah, right. oh, yeah. uh, and they'll go probably to jobs where, you know, they won't be able to, to, to do the kind of things that we're doing within that service. And that's a massive loss to the service and yourselves, isn't it? Well, at least you can get your car washed for half price. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go and see him now. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. I know there's more to, more to come, but we'll oh. come back to that. Yeah. Mark, uh -huh. what do you think is important in relationships with, with, with your staff? Your family. Family should be involved? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah? And what else? Uh, Did you know you look like you've been out all night? <laughs> Yeah. What a night out that. <laughs> you look like you've been on the oh, tail. No. It's been with the uh, Julia Glacius. Mm -hmm. uh, what else is there? How do you like staff to treat you, Mark? Well, the teasers are teasers as well. I can't think of No, it's alright, Mark, because oh. you, you, you're struggling with your, with your thinking yeah. today. Um, oh, yeah. You managed to get a few words yeah. out, so that, yeah. that, that's something. Uh -huh. um, but do you think it's uh, important that you have staff that you get on with? Yes, yeah. yeah. Now, what about if you place with staff you don't get on with? What should happen then? You just walk away from them. So oh. when you walk away, where do you go, Greg's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and gets, Greg's gets, for a plastic, or gets, two. I think it's a taxi. <laughs> two. What do you do when, when that happens, Mark? I, I, does anybody sit with the afterwards and say, well, Mark, you know, you have to try and get No, it's ask us. Uh, who, who do I like? You know? but, uh, I don't. Uh, you don't like anybody. I don't no, take any no. orders. Well, when are you going to remember staff from Greg's working with you? No, he won't. And then you can have <laughs> plasters on tap. Yeah, you could have. Plasters on, you know, on tap. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm going to round it off now. Um, I think we've got quite a bit in there. Um, obviously. You know, when we mentioned about rather than separate conversation when we're doing the podcast, deflects from what we're actually talking about. And that's something you need to be aware of both when we actually do the next one yeah. because it's, it's you know, I, I know um, sometimes you forget you're actually on the podcast, but yeah. it does spoil the flow and it makes it hard work for, yeah, for, for Trey as well. She's trying to stop it and start and whatever. So, now, Emma... Uh, was relieved because I, I, I didn't actually <laughs> bring her in. No. Uh, but I think she's feeling a little bit more relaxed than she was. I'm not going to put you on the spot. But if, if you had to choose two things, Emma, uh, <clears throat> and you can listen to this yourself on the podcast when Trey gives you the thing, what do you think is crucial to good relationships between staff and clients? What stands out for you? Building the trust and respect for that person. Definitely, yeah. definitely. That's that's a big one, and I think that's failed in yeah. both those areas yeah. there. Um, that's a massive one. That, and we we will come back to how you do it, yeah, next time. Thank you, Emma. So we'll round off now. Um, sorry about the, the the metallic sound in the background. I don't know what the hell that was. Mm -hmm. uh, and the the mm. person's car alarm. Remember them car alarms that used to constantly go off? That, that yeah. You know, there's no burglar within a hundred miles, but it kept no. going off. What kind of alarm is that? You know, oh, I think it'll just go off. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't even breathe. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, how can you possibly call yourself an alarm when you just go off just because you want to Random, go off? Randomly. Oh, there's no burglar there. I don't care. 
<laughs> People put them on the side of houses and they seem to flash forever. You know, the wind blows. <laughs> and all, that, all these states up all night. Oh, they are, yeah, definitely. Oh, they all come out and look at it. Well, where are they at? Well, they're all there. Oh, yeah. What are we going to do? Uh, anyway. On that note, thanks everybody. So check it out on the uh, the blog. We're yeah. going to give Emma the, the address. She can check out a little little bit of input there. She's mm. going to be famous now. <laughs> um, and we're going to come back to this at some point. We're going to look at what people can do, uh, clients and staff, to enable those working relationships to work really well. And also uh, look at how you avoid the two situations you've heard, which had quite clearly reached crisis point, Jennifer and and Gary. And if you've got any thoughts on that, and, and there's something that you're struggling with as well, where it's not working with the client, and you've seen that, and you prefer to work with that client more, but you keep getting put with somebody else, then please <coughs> give us your comments. We ignore anything that we don't agree with, but we do promote things that we agree with. Okay, so if there's any bad comments, I'm not going to read them. <laughs> okay, that's a wrap, thank you. Bye.